Studying galaxy evolution is especially challenging because in order to see very young galaxies, astronomers need to look very far into space. Recall the concept of look back time from chapter 1. Galaxies are the machines that create stars. The first stars, called population three stars, formed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. They were so large and hot that they collectively reionized the entire universe. This reionization left its imprint on the cosmic microwave background, an imprint that has now been detected. The rate of star formation peaked when the universe was only from 2 to 3 billion years old. Today, the rate of star formation is relatively low. Recall the trends in galaxies from Chapter 20. Recall that going from irregular galaxies on the far right through spirals, which includes barred spirals, to E0 ellipticals on the left. Galaxies have larger supermassive black hole masses, they have larger dark matter halos and central bulges, they are found in larger galaxy groupings and they have decreasing rates of star formation. Elliptical galaxies can be thought of as being all central bulge with no disk structure. Galaxies to the left of SB are no longer forming new stars. Recent and evolving models of galaxy formation show how these trends would naturally occur. Another trend is that astronomers are finding that every galaxy with a central bulge possesses a supermassive black hole at its center. In normal quiet galaxies like the Milky Way and Andromeda, these supermassive black holes are dormant. In active galaxies, supermassive black holes are feeding, creating hot quasars at their centers and creating bipolar jets of material that has been accelerated to speeds approaching the speed of light. Astronomers have discovered that a supermassive black hole's mass and both the outer star speeds and the central bulge mass of the host galaxy are tightly correlated even though there is no significant physical connection today. This correlation suggests that the bulge masses and outer star speeds were strongly influenced by the black hole masses in the distant past. This means that these black holes have been there since the beginning. It even may be that these black holes played an important role in the formation of their host galaxies. An even stronger correlation has been discovered between the black hole mass and the dark matter halo inside which a galaxy is embedded. Piecing together several areas of study, the following is a rough outline of galaxy formation. In the early universe, before there were any stars or galaxies, Gravitational instabilities and in dark matter caused it to form clouds or clumps of various sizes. These dark matter clumps then gravitationally drew in hydrogen and helium gas along the cosmic web, causing it to also clump and fragment. The larger the dark matter clump, the more gravitational pull it had. Large clumps were then able to pull in enough gas to form larger populations of galaxies, with some larger members like in galaxy clusters. The smallest of these clumps may have very slowly drawn in enough gas to form small irregular galaxies that have only recently begun to form stars. These galaxies are referred to as late-type irregular galaxies. Other nearby irregulars are believed to be the product of recent mergers or galaxy interactions. Computer models suggest that the very centers of these gas clouds may have collapsed to form supermassive black holes in single events, as opposed to the accumulation of smaller stellar mass black holes. Each black hole then begins feeding on the surrounding gas, creating a quasar, jets and all the characteristics of an active galaxy. As the black hole feeds and grows, the gas surrounding it becomes hotter and more turbulent. The turbulence not only ejects gas off the accretion disk of material, but it may also compress gas farther out and kickstart star formation. The currently measured correlation between black hole mass and outer star speeds and central bulge mass may have been established at this time. Eventually, the turbulence and outward thermal pressure drives the surrounding gas away from the black hole, leaving nothing for it to feed on.
it then goes dormant and the galaxy is no longer active. Meanwhile, galaxies in the large dark matter clumps begin to merge together. We observe galaxies merging today, but mergers would have occurred more frequently in the past. The 13 small galaxies that orbit the Milky Way will eventually merge with it. In fact, the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy and the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy are both currently merging with the Milky Way. Galaxy mergers increase the mass and size of a galaxy's spheroidal structures, i.e. central bulge and dark matter halo. As matter falls toward the supermassive black holes, the black holes will begin to feed again. If each galaxy has a black hole, they will eventually merge to form an even larger black hole. Mergers also increase the temperature of the central bulge. Because star formation requires very cold environments, only in the cooler regions farther out from the central bulge can stars continue to form. As mergers continue, less and less of the galaxy is capable of forming stars. The larger the dark matter clump, the faster gas is pulled in gravitationally. The more gas pulled in, the greater the number of galaxies and the greater the number of mergers. The greater the number of mergers, the larger the dark matter halo and central bulge grow in the remaining galaxies and the more quickly the those remaining large galaxies end star formation. On the Hubble diagram, Mergers result in the evolution of galaxies from the irregular side toward the elliptical size. SA galaxies have had enough mergers to squelch star formation. Although it is now believed that ellipticals are more frequently the result of the mergers of many smaller galaxies, elliptical galaxies can also form from mergers of two large galaxies. Whether this kind of merger creates an elliptical or spiral depends on the net rotation of the newly created galaxies.